Greetings, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for joining our circle as we gather monthly for our group meditation for the common good. In the cycle of Taurus, as we work with energies of the fixed cross, we bring our focus to implementing the principle of sharing into the world economy. And our topic for the meditation is collective well-being through free circulation to activate a new Aquarian economy. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you. So we remind ourselves of our purpose in this work that we're doing. Um, this project, which we've named Meditation for the Common Good. And our purpose is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet through group meditation which focuses group intention for the common good, brings spiritual laws and principles to life and magnetizes thought forms of solution for practical action. And as Alexander said, in this month of Taurus, with our topic of activating a new economy, collective well-being through free circulation of resources. We're working on the fixed cross, which we're using to explore topic areas related to resourcing and sharing, supporting the implementing of sharing in economics. We align with the sign of Taurus with its esoteric rule of Vulcan, the smith, the forger of forms, as we seek to magnetize and energize these thought forms, which will support the establishment of more just and healthy economic mechanisms that foster the free circulation of resources for collective well-being. We invoke the light of the eye of the bull within the waxing tide of the moon, that our efforts in meditation may illuminate our consciousness and that of humanity. And as we draw together around this firm intention, I hand over to Tracy, who will help to bring us into alignment as she leads us together through the naming circle. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance. As we begin our alignment, and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers and the action area group members. As your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, 
Tracy Arbor, calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Rebecca Hood. Hello everyone, it's Rebecca from the Sunshine Coast on the east coast of Australia. Welcome. Alexander. Hi, this is Alexander Ilchuk, joining from Brooklyn, New York, United States. Welcome. Helen. Helen Franklin, linking in from England, near London. Welcome. Andrea. Andrea Ross. Hello, everyone. Coming from Fairfax, Virginia, United States. Welcome. Katya. And on behalf of Katya, I will say that Katya is joining from Brooklyn, New York. Thank you. Welcome. Anna. Anna, please unmute yourself. I'm joining from UK, England, Southeast. Welcome. Thank you. Anna. Annie, yes. I'm sorry. Annie. Oh, oh gosh. Ain Crater, you unmuted. Oh, Welcome. Aneta. Okay. Ann Creter, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Welcome, Annette. Ann. Thank you. Annette. Please unmute. Annette Lüffler from Denmark. Welcome. Birgitta. Welcome, Brad. Hi, it's Brad from upstate New York. Welcome, Carlos. It shows that Carlos offline at the moment. Okay, welcome, Carlos. Katerina? Katarina from Sweden. Welcome. Cheryl. Thank you. Uh, Cheryl from uh, Ames, Iowa, USA. Welcome. Danielle. Danielle, please unmute yourself. Welcome, Darcy.
welcome, Estella. Estela Tustanowski de Santa Fe, Argentina. Welcome. Jillian. Jillian Douglas from Norfolk, UK. Welcome. Giselle. Welcome, Karen. Karen Gritska from Portland, Oregon, USA. Welcome. Katya. Hi, Katya Kaufman, New York, USA. Welcome, Lynn. Hello from Lynn Green in Ohio, USA. Welcome. Welcome. Maureen. Welcome. Michelle. Hi, this is Michelle Atterby. I'm calling in from Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. Welcome. Rebecca. Rebecca Chris, Mapleton, Queensland, Australia. Welcome. Thank you, Tracy. Rosvita. Rosvita, please unmute yourself. Welcome, Sherry. Hello everyone, Sherry Dahl. I'm in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, let's go. Go ahead. Rosita. Osvita from Geneva. My God. Welcome. Yeah, it's, go it's not working. My God, this is Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you. So today's action area group and 
other interested meditators gathered to contemplate our topic at the time of the full moon this month of Taurus. And the impressions that were generated from the work at that full moon time have been held and brooded over by the action area group and other subjective meditators, perhaps even including others of you on this call throughout the preparation phase, the half moon cycle leading up to this webinar, the new moon time. So this month our action area group is made up of Ellen, Alexander, Andrea, myself and Tracy who's expressing contributions inspired by Betty Fredrickson who could be with us today. Um, and we'd also like to acknowledge support this month from Leslie Van. So um, we have some synthesizing statements that we'll offer um, in a meditative fashion for us all to contemplate. And I'll hand over to Helen when she's ready to um, offer into the circle. Thank you, Rebecca. I would like to start with this picture, which we had at our full moon meditation, a sort of depiction of the etheric web around our planet Earth. And the etheric is expressive of the essential non-separateness of all life, we looked at it as a means of sharing and distributing the material necessities of life through a free flow of energies to and through points of distribution. We also saw it as a web of energy through which the cosmic forces flow as the blood flows through the veins and arteries. At this time of the new moon, I would like to look at ideas of the group of world servers, of which we're a part, sharing horizontally through all humanity and across the globe, and vertically sharing with hierarchy, our elders or our soul consciousness. We've been thinking this year about cultivating our temple garden. And I believe we can visualize our thought forms as seeds of light, which can grow into strengthening the vision of a new world and an ever-growing sense of humanity's potential to create a different future. The Tibetan refers to the law of economy, not as scattering seeds, but as governing the scattering of the atoms of matter and their dissociation from one another their wide distribution, vibratory rhythm, diversity and quality, and their inherent rotary or circling action. Part of this sharing diverse future is all of us human beings seeing ourselves as part of group conscious soul, rather than as little individual self-satisfying people who can become greedy and consequently aggressive. We can spread and share seed ideas of the breadth of human consciousness. Then humanity will be less fearful of losing the past, including material possessions, stop clinging to what it knows and move with confidence into the new and future civilization. And part of this is listening to those we share with. What are they offering and sharing with us? Every member of humanity has some facet of the truth to share, and we need to receive 
as well as give on a subtle and material level. We also need to be mindful of what is really needed and to offer with respect. In our healing group, we offer healing according to the will of the soul. We don't ask for specific outcomes and we don't offer healing unless it's asked for in some way. Healing is about wholeness and we as individuals cannot yet see the whole, certainly not the whole economy of our planet Earth. And now I'd like to move to consider our vertical alignment. And that too is about give and take. And I would like to look at this colored image of a torus. And I'd like us to imagine it rotating and vibrating with the energy circulating up and down, around and from the center, out and in. As members of the new group of world servers, we are transformers of hierarchical energy for humanity, offering it a safe and useful form of energy according to need. The Tibetan tells us as we build strands of the bridge of our Antikaranas, we're helping to build and strengthen the head heart connection for our planetary Logos. The link between the will and purpose of Shambhala manifesting through the plan of a loving wisdom hierarchy or loving wise hierarchy. So again, we allow for reciprocity in giving. We are in small measure helping and sharing with the greater being. And we are receiving, absorbing, and using its light and energy to polish our facets of the one soul. So the seed thoughts we sow and share through our chalice are full of hope and strength and lead to the building of a new economy for the common good and the collective well-being. Thank you, and now, Alexander. Thank you, Helen. The idea that came to me as we were reflecting together on the economy based on the principle of sharing was about the essence and the value of freedom. the free circulation of energy and resources is possible only if all who involved in the process do it with the free will recognizing and trusting the process that the circulation happens for the common good of all thus allowing the healing of the human being the human kingdom as a whole
in the United States where I live, big part of the country have intrinsic resistance to ideas of sharing. Because the, the powerful thought form of a controlling government who gives support to those we need comes with a price of losing the freedom of and the strong government controlling economy and such impeding the free flow uh, of energy and therefore I want to offer to the group Chalice the seed thought of supreme value of freedom as the free circulation establishes in the world economy. Freedom is an essentially spiritual attribute underlying the entire evolutionary process. This should always be remembered as a strengthening and conditioning reality by all men everywhere. It has survived eons of opposition from the principle of enslaving selfishness and is largely responsible at this time for the struggle in which we are participating. Over to you, Andrea. We take a deep breath. And through this breath, we align through the unified and steady rhythm of our inhalation of oxygen and exhalation of carbon dioxide. As we do this, we are each a part of a much larger organism. This is scientifically defined as the carbon cycle on Earth. And it is a process that provides us with an obvious yet invisible example of thriving circulation. The plant kingdom abundantly and unconditionally produces and circulates oxygen to sustain life on the earth. And the animal kingdom receiving and reciprocate, reciprocating shares the gift of carbon dioxide in return. An ever-present example of free and universally beneficial commerce delivered by the divine breath. Let us envision the harmonious and generous exchange and flow that connects us all on both sides of the veil and with all kingdoms on earth in sacred circulation. So beautifully manifested in the rainbow image of a circulating Taurus. We imagine a thriving economy 
sustained by inspired creativity, generosity, and a shared joy of universal achievement for the common good. Tracy, you may continue. Thank you, Andrea. The collective well being through free circulation of energy and resources is not a new idea or goal for humanity. During the cycle of the Taurus new moon, we are reminded and offered energies to assist us in detaching from the Maya that holds us in opposition to this goal. From the angle of form, let struggle be dismayed. From the angle of soul, I see, and when the eye is opened, all is illumined. From the Alcult teachings to modern science, we all know that everything is energy in our world and universe. So it isn't a matter of lack of energy, but the task of learning how to tap into its infinite supply and circulating it for the benefit of the collective well being for humanity. To move forward in our evolution, we need to escape the hold of Maya on the lower planes of the physical and astral worlds and reorientate ourselves to higher planes of manas and booty where intuition will freely flow and circulate through us and align us with the divine plan in this way we will begin to see outer changes in our physical world Taking practical measures to contribute to the free circulation of energy, we must remove the blockages that prevent its freedom from flowing. This can be seen in our lives by practicing mutual respect for one another and refining our genuine support for our common accomplishments. As we move from within, the free circulation of energy can be accomplished both vertically as well as horizontally, as Helen mentioned. Being open to the sources of energy offered us through abstract mind and intuition, we will be swept into the flow and receptivity of the divine intent. These energies are impressed with divine intent, and eventually we will learn the right use of energy. By becoming receptive to divine intent, not my will, Father, but thine, and accepting it deep within, the power of God will be invoked into manifestation. How will it appear to us in our physical world? Possibly through an increase in camaraderie, sharing, and mutual benefit for the whole we will begin to drop the individual identities and begin to work as one mind, one body, and one soul, lifting the veil of illusion, which will ultimately manifest as the brotherhood of humankind. We can take notice to the artists and musicians, for example, and how they tap into these higher, more subtle worlds to bring it into manifestation, patterns and rhythms that affect all humanity at a soul level. An excellent example of this was impressionistic art that began in the 1860s. 
it attributed to profound changes in humanity as it stimulated the human soul at its nuclear level. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you. So picking up the threads again from the full moon meditation, I'm just returning to the wonderful quote that Helen gave at that time from DK from Esoteric Healing, where he says that the keynote to good health, esoterically speaking, is sharing or distribution, just as it is the keynote to the general well being of humanity and the economic ills of mankind closely respond to disease in the individual. Sorry, closely correspond to disease in the individual. In Problems of Humanity, DK flag, flags a major obstacle to economic free flow. He describes a selfish group with materialistic purposes who have for centuries exploited the masses and used the labor of mankind for their selfish ends, who have cornered and exploited the world's resources and the staples required for civilized living, owning and controlling the world's wealth through their interlocking directorates. How can humanity loosen the hold of the force that flows through this group and wrest power away from it? Reorientation, alignment, vertical and horizontal, affirmative action, around moving away from selfishness and materialism and focusing on the common good. In the Chinese system of medicine, each organ has its own time of day, qualities and contribution to the whole. Each organ feeds another, mediates or suppresses another. As human beings, the conscientious endeavor to expand our consciousness, to appreciate and value the contribution of each other, of all the parts, may be a very good starting point for a move towards the free circulation of resources. And this sets the tone for an economy based on circulation through relationships, relationships that are constructive and supportive rather than only self-interested. Perhaps what if we focus on local economies where we can develop direct relationships with each other and where we can learn to listen and respond to each other's needs in healthy ways, working to build health from the levels of the cells and organs. DK also tells us that healthy distribution of physical supply operates in response 
to physical need that is med mediated through the creative imagination. And he wants not to confuse this generation of physical flow with high abstraction. So let us connect the high ideas with our work on the physical plane. As communities, can we learn to work together to understand true need and to meet it through the creative development of mechanisms for the attraction and distribution of the necessary physical resources? Is it possible that in community where people know each other and participate together in economic decision making as carriers of responsibility for how things work out in their own communities, that the favourable and the unfavourable outcomes of economic decisions and experiments could generate collective learning through experience about how to create healthy economic circulation? And would this kind of experiment help to generate the trust and transparency so lacking in our current economic systems, which would enable affirmative, altruistic economic action in freedom on multiple levels? Following our bodily analogy, if we're all beings in the bodies of greater beings, from our communities to the planetary centers or cities we inhabit, to the body of the planetary and solar logoi, could this self-determining approach to community economics lead to the creation of healthier, more effectively resourced cells, organs and etheric centers able to function harmoniously within a greater whole, a broader economic community of communities. Just as the healing of illnesses and blockages in our physical body is entangled with the resolution of karma, so we can understand that the development of free circulation in the, the economy is also likely to involve the working out of karmas amongst individuals, groups, communities and nations. Karmas which we may not be fully aware of or even fully understand. It's important to acknowledge as we go forward and in our attempts to, to realize this work, that opinions, beliefs, and personal interests vary greatly within communities. How will we negotiate these differences? Establishing effective economic circulation necessarily involves committed and loving effort towards the development of right human relationships and the elaboration of tools and skills like conflict resolution and position taking to help communities and individuals to come to mutual economic understandings within themselves and with each other. Lastly, let us focus for a moment on the rhythmic, selfless, integrating, balancing and transforming function of the heart. DK tells us that the heart is the center of life, as the brain is the center of consciousness. From the heart, the blood circulates and is controlled. 
thus the three great systems, the etheric, the endocrine and the nervous systems are related through the blood system. In a relationship based economic system, what kinds of mechanisms or group functions would serve as the heart of economics? And as we contemplate this offering of thoughts and ideas, we prepare ourselves to move into meditation in a moment. In our meditation, we will visualize the image of the torus, as a symbol of sharing in every direction. and a reminder of the etheric connection with the law of economy, linked with matter and the third ray. The etheric being the higher four planes of our physical existence. And to the planetary being, our buddhic, atmic, monadic, and ardic natures. Microcosm and the macrocosm. Let us feel our connection with the etheric web feel ourselves connecting one to another and through it radiating love to all our fellow human beings around the globe and love and care also to the animal kingdom, the animals and birds and fish, reptiles. Linking to the trees with love, to the flowers, the plants, the ferns, the mosses, the lichens.
linking through into the mineral kingdom, the earth, the rocks, the elements and the gems, right through into our earth, and feel the connection with the earth through our sacral centers, the third ray within our sacral centers, right down to our feet, linking with the third ray personality of the earth. And let us be aware of the mother of the world at the heart of our planet. Our great Devic goddess. And let us begin to link our golden etheric web with the white light of the soul. As a soul, let us link with the ashram of the Christ, filled with the blessings of the Buddha at this time of Taurus. And let us be conscious of the Buddha with the avatar of synthesis and the avatar of equilibrium, the spirit of peace, these three great beings forming a triangle around the Christ. Sense the loving wisdom and the strong silent will fulfilling the purpose of the Lord of the world manifesting and incarnating the plan. And let us feel the free flow of energy through our meditation, the flow from the cosmic forces through our solar system to the earth and to the mother of the world and then rising up again as in one breath. Sense that rise and fall, distributing and sharing energy. And let us sense this energy also radiating outwards, as in the breath and then breathing in again. We allow ourselves for a while in self-forgetfulness to breathe this clear air and sense the great space.
now into this silent space, we place our seed thoughts. Firstly, only through the principle of sharing will human ills be cured. Only through the principle of sharing will human ills be cured. Alexandra, freedom is an essentially spiritual attribute underlying the entire evolutionary process. Andrea. In the birthing of a new and inclusive economy, we create and sustain an electrically vibrant, unobstructed flow of trustworthy and collectively respectful sharing.
Tracy. How can our creativity support free circulation? And what can we learn from musicians and artists in general to increase our creative attitude to support free circulation? Rebecca. Free circulation through relationship and collective creative imagination mediated by the heart, balancing supply and demand. Free circulation through relationship and collective creative imagination mediated by the heart, balancing supply and demand.
let us allow the precipitation of all we have received in the silence to flow into our group chalice. May the free flow of these energies, ideas, and seeds for the common good and collective well-being now be distributed by the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on the earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. And from the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth.
Thank you. And Tracy. Thank you everyone for your most valuable contribution in this meditation today. We're now ready for whole group sharing and we will be opening the community impressions board. If anyone would like to share their impressions with the group, either today during this period of time or as things come to you throughout this new moon cycle, you are always welcome to share on the community impression board at any time. Uh, and Alexandra, I believe, will put the link to that in the chat box for everyone. And I think we will now open group sharing. So I'm going to hand over to Alexander right now. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. And uh, the links are in the chat section of the control panel along with the summary prepared by the action area group today our sharing took a bit longer than usual but it feels right <laughs> and uh, if anyone would like to share anything with your voice please raise your hand and we will unmute you See, Anne has her hand raised. Would you like to unmute yourself, Anne, and share with us? I'm not sure. Uh, Anne's hand was raised before, so it might before. be by mistake. Okay. Unmuted. <laughs> Anne Crater. Anne, it's always good to hear your voice. Thank you, everyone. It's John Horan. I was just thinking in terms of building the sharing economy and how the great dis-ease of our time is a lack of circulation. I'm sure it's been noted before, but sometimes the simplest solution is the best. If we think of it medically as a block circulatory system, Perhaps we might explore using many of the same techniques and tools we experience with hardening of the arteries, whether that's a bypass or diet and exercise. But I think as the, as above, so below with the macro and the micro, I think I'll just turn that over in my mind for some time and look at it this problem of sharing or lack thereof is kind of a medical problem throughout the body politic of humanity. And with that, I thank you. Thank you, John. Lynn, please unmute yourself. 
I just would like to thank you for the exquisite quality of your thoughts and for the warm love you share. Thanks very much. Thank you, Lynn. Estella. Yes. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to this deep meditation. Unfortunately, I had some connection problems, but one word uh, reminds me because I I heard it many times during this time, and it is sharing. And think it is a it is a key point for overcome in a best way in the best possible way this transition time so thank you thank you very much for for this possibility Thank you, Stella. May I add something? Uh, yes, of course. Yes, because even with these technical problems, I could feel the, the powerful energy of this, of this group, really. Very, very powerful. Thank you. I would like just to make a comment on um, Tracy's seed thought on behalf of, of Betty, which was about music and the arts. And I was thinking, especially at this time of trouble in the Middle East, of the work that Baron Boyne has done in allowing um, Israeli and Palestinian youngsters to play together in the most wonderful music in, in his great orchestra. So it's a good example of it. <clears throat> I would like to come on to Helen's note of the mother of the world and how as mothers, one of the first lessons that I think we all collectively and probably on a global scale do is teach our young children to share. And we are given so many hints and, and so many examples of sharing from the lower kingdoms um, that are there to provide the human kingdom in, in such selfless and generous ways. And it makes me pause as I, being a mother myself, and the importance that I and we put on helping our young children to share. And it makes me question where we lose that as children grow and become more self-focused. And 
it makes me want to see changes in our education system so that that sharing is a universal importance for the entire lifetime of human beings. Thank you, Andrea. Giselle, you unmuted? Yes, no. I, I would like um, say thank you because it was a very, very deep meditation. And I'm so happy to share with the group. Um, and for this opportunity to contribute to the common good. Thank you for you, for the group. And until the next reunion, I would like to participate too. It was very, very deep. Thank you. Thank you, Giselle. Karen, please unmute yourself. Okay. Oh, thank you, everyone. This was a very beautiful presentation and meditation. Um, I've thought you know, about many of these thoughts for a long time and I, I haven't got the answers, but I do think that as we work in group meditation, it is possible. I, I really valued and appreciated the images that were shown too. And I think the image of the Taurus um, is very, um, very, very helpful. For, I'm thinking of how I might use that in just some of the work that I do. I mean, I have used it, but I think in terms of, um, you know, the, the both of them, the one with the heart too, that's from Heart Math Institute, I think, is very um, a visual for what, you know, that takes many words to explain. So I really appreciated um, those visuals and reminders of how they might be used to circulate. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, I thought many times about what is the, core you know what's the core problem with with sharing and um i mean i do think it comes down to fear fear that there's not enough and um and anyway i think that's just what i think about maybe that is at the core i i don't know there's probably something deeper thank you Thank you, Karen, and thanks to everyone. We now uh, really uh, has the time when we normally wrap up our sharing. Today's focus is sharing, so it's sharing flows freely. <laughs> and uh, I want to invite everyone to participate in this work in the coming cycles as uh, it happens through spontaneous sharing within the action area group and uh, starts with the meditation during the full moon on the topic and the focus. So um, please join us. The next uh, meditation for the common good will be on May 28th. It will be the last day of the Gemini Solar Festival and we will be uh, meditating on the topic that we would like to collectively brainstorm and uh, that's uh, usually an extra uh, segment to our program and the new moon so we for those of you who have extra uh, 15 minutes we invite you to stay a little bit longer but for those who have to leave uh, this is the 
a closing of our work today and uh, you also see on the screen some other uh, webinars that so far are scheduled for this current month please join us and uh, um, as I said if you can stay a little bit longer let's stay longer and brainstorm and, and heartstorm the ideas for what could be the topic for our reflection group reflection in the cycle of Gemini as in the science of mutable cross we work with theme of harmonization and right relationships so it would be a topic along that line with this I in as would like to ask Rebecca to sound the closing words and uh, a mantra for us to close our work with the theme of sharing. So as we seal our magical act of distribution, let's connect to the words that or a version of the words that DK gives us in the money meditation. O thou in whom we live and move and have our being. The power that makes all things new. Touch the hearts of people everywhere. That we too may give to the common good that which has previously been given to personal and material satisfaction. <coughs> the new group of world servers needs money in large quantities. Pray that the needed money be made available. May this potent energy of thine be in the hands of the forces of light. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And um, as I said, if you have extra 15 minutes, it's a short segment, very brief, where we could look into the next cycle and reflect uh bring forward ideas what would be our focus within the theme of harmonization and right relationships and just to remind us it's just adaptation of one of the factors suggested by tibetan uh as the conditions for the reappearance of the christ in the original wording, it sounds that it's uh, establishment of the measure of peace in international relations. And uh, through the science of mutable cross, we look into this theme of peace or harmonization of relations in a broader context on what is that on all levels, on the international level, our national uh, levels, community levels, and our family and in the Peace level. So that's a question for us as a group. So any ideas, please raise your hand and let's generate ideas which we will offer for our subjective uh, support group to reflect and choose the topic for our next month. Lynn, your hand is raised, please. Um, I was hoping to just add to our, our last talk just a bit. Um, Alexander, you spoke of freedom. 
and um, one of one of the people said talked about um, the education of young children, and um, there was a preschool that my son attended, a New Age preschool, and the way the children learned to share was not a common way. Um, they were not asked to share. They were um, super well supervised, but they were put in situations with other children, social situations, where um, they made their own choices. And they quickly learned that if they didn't share, they actually were not part of everything that was going on around them. So the whole learning experience occurred within them as young children. And um, I see in my son who attended this, how it's affected his life. He's now 36. And it's really had a great effect on his adult relationships at work and with friends. Um, it's, it's, as you spoke of freedom, Alexandra, it, it made me think of this uh, because they learned again through their own choices what sharing meant. Um, they were of course never allowed to hurt other children or anything, but uh, it, was, it was quite a lesson for them. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, there are several people whose microphones are uh, muted by an organizer. I will try to unmute all now and please be in control of your own uh, microphones. Oh, didn't work. It's actually muted everyone. Mm, okay. Now everyone should be unmuted, but it doesn't work. So please just raise your hand and we'll unmute you. 